The 2023 draft is soon to be upon us, and hundreds of men's lives will be changed with a simple phone call. You've been selected. Whether it's in the green room or at a party at home, they nervously wait for the moment that they've been grinding towards for years. We unfortunately aren't as blessed with athletic talent, but we can feel the same kind of tension with DraftKings Sportsbook, the sponsor of this video. You know you can bet on anything you desire in the football realm with DraftKings, right? Same goes for the draft. You can place wagers on where anyone can be selected, from the first overall pick to Mr. Irrelevant. Have a hunch on where a player will go? Make your pick on the app before the teams make theirs. And even if DraftKings Sportsbook isn't available in your state, they're offering a free-to-play round one pool with big prizes for the taking. How to play? Just download the app, go to pools, and choose from any free contest of your liking. Best of all, there's no deposit or wager required for it. DraftKings themselves will be hosting a draft night specific pool the night of the first round. Who will be picked before who? Who will make a draft day trade? It's all here for you. Get in on the action for yourself all weekend long. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use promo code UTREE to have a shot at cashing in on the prizes for yourself. But this video isn't about the 2023 draft. It's about the past. Let's talk a little more about that. Welcome back to 2018, live from Jerry Boy's Shrine of Vanity and Playoff Utility. Not only did Dallas suffer through a frustrating season where they just missed the playoffs, they have to suffer a terrible fate. Watching the goddamn Eagles win a Super Bowl. The standby memes are gone. But we're compensated through a draft of big risks and bigger rewards. Great talents litter the draft. And five years later, it's safe to judge them. For the most part. With the first pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Baker Mayfield. Wow. Quarterback, Oklahoma. I hated this pick at the time. Baker gave me Ryan Leaf vibes with a lot of his actions, and no matter the talent, it could potentially hold him back from prominence. Looking back on it, those fears were overblown, but the talent? Depends on who you ask. I've been on record saying that going to Cleveland would either be the best or worst thing to happen to him. Oddly enough, it was both. He started out as the Great Hope, the savior of a long derelict franchise. Coming in and leading a comeback in his first game against the Jets, that cocky son of a bitch charisma, his 2020 season, leading them to their first playoff win in a new era? It should be a happy ending. Until 2021. Playing with a broken collarbone was a terrible decision, and his extreme regression as a result cost him millions of dollars. The Browns fucked him, and cast him off for pennies for the sexier option. If he doesn't play with that injury, he might still be Cleveland's QB. Then again, he has a lot of issues with his game. And his 2022 was horrible. He's now doomed to the fringes of the league. It's more about the Browns than Baker, but rules are rules. Sorry, man. The New York Giants select Saquon Barkley, running back, Penn State. Nowadays, you'll have a ton of football guys scoff at the idea of drafting a running back in the top five, especially for a team with a shit ton of needs like the Giants. But Saquon was a different class of back coming out of college. A potentially generational talent with the ability to change the direction of a franchise. And when he's on the field, he near single-handedly carries the G-Men to relevance. Note the words, when he's on the field. Saquon was on the fringe of becoming the next Kajana Carter. High ankle sprains in 2019 and 2021, a torn ACL in 2020. It's held him back from greatness, but once again, talent emerges with time. He experienced a renaissance in 2022. And it's hard to argue he's not the catalyst of the offense. He's now stuck on the franchise tag. And I want to salivate over his talent, but you can't help but wish he could stay healthy. Guarantee me he won't get destroyed and we can reassess this in the future. But for now, err on the side of caution. Yeah. 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 Okay. The New York Jets select Sam Darnold, quarterback, USC. Sam was a risky pick, but someone I saw as having high upside if he could limit his turnover proneness in college. The problem was he was going to a quarterback graveyard. Not just in team, but Adam Gase. It's not a good sign when the most notable moments of a career are contracting mono and seeing ghosts. It shows that player development is paramount. And it's really easy to ruin a player. Carolina gambled on the idea that Darnold could be fixed. And the Jets salvaged something after that massive haul they gave up to get him, but his time as a Panther was pretty unremarkable. At best. He's had his moments, but nothing that screams quality starter. 
Just another body to add to the mass grave of Jets draft picks. The Cleveland Browns select Denzel Ward. Whoa. Defensive back, Ohio State. Thank you, Texans, for having a nightmare 2017 season. As a result, the Browns had two top five picks. For pick number two, Cleveland went for dire need and slightly reached. I'd say it worked out. Two-time Pro Bowler, their go-to shutdown corner, and signed to a $100 million contract. Now, if he could manage to play all 16 games in the season, this guy would be a home run. That and hope last year's rough season was merely the result of Joe Woods being awful. Cleveland needs him at his best. Success. The Denver Broncos select... Bradley Chubb, defensive end, NC State. Health has been the keyword for a lot of players in the top five of this draft. When he's on the field, Bradley Chubb is an absolute shit wrecker. The problem is Chubb has trouble staying on it. A dominant rookie season where you dream of him and Von Miller for years. And then he falls to the dreaded IR. Usually the season ending kind. But even then, the talent is absolutely there. Flashes of brilliance got Miami to not only trade for him, but give him a shitload of money in the process. He just hasn't been optimal with the Dolphins yet. Same thing as Saquon. If he can stay on the field, this can be reassessed in the future. Yeah. 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 The Indianapolis Colts select Quentin Nelson, guard, Notre Dame. Nelson filled an absolute need for the Colts and then some. One of the best guards in football for four years and then paid like it after. Even if this past season was rough, you can't deny him of his impact. A home run. The Buffalo Bills select Josh Allen, quarterback, Wyoming. When we usually talk about Project QBs with a rocket arm and wild inaccuracy, these stories don't end well. It takes a lot for a player like this to even come close to their upside. And Allen looked like shit in his first two years in the league. Then in season three, almost magically, everything clicked and he became a superstar. Future Super Bowl to be determined. Like with Sam Darnold, it's a testament to proper development. Josh Allen had the structure and coaching around him to help him reach his full potential. There's not much else to be said besides shock that a QB like him managed to blossom into a stud. Why do you think he got paid like he did? You wonder why everyone ogles about raw skill with QBs in the draft these days? This guy is why. For better or worse. Success. The Chicago Bears select Roquan Smith. Linebacker, Georgia. What a beast of a player. A field general who terrorizes offenses. You wish Chicago could have found a way to keep him, but that relationship unfortunately became untenable. It's their loss. A two-time All-Pro who will probably get at least a few more with that big contract he got in Baltimore. He's not Ray Lewis, but he's close. Success. The San Francisco 49ers select Mike McGlinchey. Offensive tackle, Notre Dame. When you draft a lineman this high, you have to hit on him. McGlinchey's not Ryan Ramchick tier at right tackle, but he's pretty damn good. There's a reason Denver opened up the wall for him this offseason. He's a player who will bring quality to an offensive line. That alone makes him a good pick. The Arizona Cardinals select Josh Rosen, quarterback, UCLA. I thought this guy was the most NFL-ready QB of anyone in the draft. This is why the only expertise I have is in eating shit. Playing in Arizona as rookie year, we saw less of a confident QB and a guy who looked as lost as a small child. At first, I thought it was merely because of how disastrous the Cardinals were. But then he was traded to Miami for a pittance that became nothing. Then he was benched repeatedly in Miami. Then he was told to fuck off from there. Then he just sucked ass. An absolute flop and a half. And it's not even a debate. It's funny because Josh Rosen once said that nine mistakes were made ahead of him. Well, good news for you, Josh. The Cardinals now have 246 regrets. The Miami Dolphins select Minka Fitzpatrick, defensive back, Alabama. In terms of what Minka brings to the table, he's been an outstanding selection. But the Dolphins haven't been the team to reap the most of it. That would be the Steelers who made a bold move to trade a first-rounder for him in 2019. In Pittsburgh, he's not only gotten paid, he's become one of the better safeties in football. A three-time All-Pro and potentially on a Hall of Fame trajectory. An easy decision. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Vita Vea. Oh. Defensive tackle, Washington. Vita Vea, a classic nose tackle that suffocates the middle of the line was honestly a big piece to that Bucks defense that won it all a few years ago. 
He's a cornerstone in Tampa Bay, and is paid accordingly. Now he can afford all the high-end stakes he desires. May he feast on offensive lines for years to come. Success. The Washington Redskins select Deron Payne, defensive tackle, Alabama. There's a big reason why Washington chose to pony up the big bucks for Payne this offseason. He's one of the best in the business at his craft, and it was emphasized with a breakout season this past year. The key to an elite defensive line, Payne should be a big piece of the commies for a while to come. Hopefully. The New Orleans Saints select Marcus Davenport. Oh, wow. Defensive end, Texas oh. San Antonio. What to think of one of the ultimate project players of this draft? The upside was immense, and New Orleans knew it, but would he realize it? The answer is somewhere in the middle. He never reached the heights that many dreamed of, but he did do some development. Brief spurts of excellence, but nothing consistent. And it's dooming him to become a journeyman. Can he tap into more of his talent in Minnesota? Possibly, but we've been wanting more out of him for a while. Yeah. 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 The Oakland Raiders select Colton Miller. Offensive tackle, UCLA. Miller isn't going to be in the upper echelon of tackles in the NFL. He had a really rough rookie campaign, but he's improved year over year. Colts developed to become a quality offensive lineman in the league. Someone who does a solid, unsung job in his role. A strange start to the Gruden Mayock era. A good pick? The Buffalo Bills select Jermaine Edmonds. Linebacker, Virginia Tech. Edmonds was a guy who wished could have fallen to the Steelers at the time, but there was no way it was happening without a trade-up. Edmonds was just way too talented and too revered to go any lower. As a Billy started out excellently. And while he's tapered off from his highs, there's a big reason why Chicago threw a Brinks truck full of cash at him this offseason. He can lead a linebacking core. And can do it well. The Los Angeles Chargers select Derwin James, defensive back, Florida State. This guy was looked at as a top 10 pick at the time of the draft. Everyone felt the Chargers got a steal with Derwin, and lo and behold, he's a premier safety and cog in their defensive machine. They made James the highest paid one at the time for a reason, you know. Just wish the injury bug didn't hit him as much. He's been healthy the past two seasons, and it'll hopefully stay that way. The Green Bay Packers select Jair Alexander, defensive back, Louisville. The Packers not being passive in the draft. That's when you knew the guard had changed over. Jair Alexander was a damn good piece to get. At peak form, one of the best corners in football. He locks down top wideouts, he gets locked up to a rich sub. Green Bay may have a lot of recent heartache, but this wasn't a mistake that led them down that road. The Dallas Cowboys select Leighton Vander Esch, linebacker, Boise State. Witnessing Leighton Vander Esch during his rookie year, you'd have thought that the Cowboys were getting a field general with a future in Ken. He just hasn't gotten back to those heights since that time. He's been starting caliber, but not second team all pro good. Injuries and lapses in play dulled the luster in his star. But he did have somewhat of a bounce back year in Dallas in 2022. It was good enough to keep him donning the star itself. So while a successful pick, you just feel bamboozled because of how good he was as a rookie. The Detroit Lions select Frank Regnow, center, Arkansas. Detroit's quietly assembled one of the best homegrown offensive lines in football. Frank Ragnow's a big piece, why? A pretty underrated lineman considering his resume and consistency. Once the Lions start winning more, the Pro Bowls for him will keep coming. This is always how it works. The Cincinnati Bengals select Billy Price, center, Ohio State. If only Frank Ragnow fell one more position. Billy Price was highly touted coming out of college, but as a Bengal, it was bad. Partially torn back in Season 1, benched in the middle of Season 2, and out of their plans by Season 3. It's a one-way ticket to the fringes. It's how things went for Cincy back then. Swing and a miss! The Tennessee Titans select Rashawn Evans, linebacker, Alabama. On the surface, Evans seems okay in his production. He was deemed a great pick at the time of the draft and was expected to man the linebacking core in Tennessee for a decade. However, his performance has felt empty. Lots of tackles past the line of scrimmage, but not much else. Tennessee declined his fifth-year option, and now he's bouncing around from team to team as a hired gun. 
Starting caliber on flawed defenses, but that's about it. You kinda wonder if he would've done better on the Patriots. Yeah. 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 The New England Patriots select Isaiah Wynn. Tackle, Georgia. The compensation for the off-traded Brandon Cooks. Can we take a wild guess as to what's held Isaiah Wynn back from his peak? If you guessed injury yeah. issues, you get a season ender. He lost his entire rookie campaign due to it. He lost a good chunk of 2019 and 2022 to them as well. When he gets on the field, he's a sturdy, reliable blindside tackle. Problem is, he has issues staying on it. My kingdom to give this guy a clean bill of health. Yeah. 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 The Carolina Panthers select DJ Moore, wide receiver, Maryland. Carolina needed weapons for Cam Newton. By God, did they get themselves a weapon in DJ Moore. A dynamic option in all facets of the passing game. And a safety valve for any quarterback. One of the more under-the-radar receivers in the league. Chicago made him a big piece in their trade of the number one pick this year for a big reason. He can slot in as a potential number one. Ironic how route running was supposed to be his big flaw, but turned out to be his greatest strength. The Baltimore Ravens select Hayden Hurst. There you go, tight DJ. End, South Carolina. Hayden Hurst made perfect sense for the Ravens at the time, considering they had massive issues at tight end back in 2018. There was only one problem as to why Hurst never thrived in Baltimore. Mark Andrews. Why settle for decent when you have a perennial pro bowler in your lap? After two years, it was obvious as to who the Ravens had chosen to lead the way in the future. And Hurst was traded to Atlanta for draft picks. As a Falcon, he was okay, but that's about it. Starting caliber, but barely. It's fascinating how the draft works. The first rounder isn't the long-term option, but the later pick is. The Atlanta Falcons select Calvin Ridley, wide receiver, Alabama. When he's on the field, Ridley is a legitimate game changer for an offense. He showed it in Atlanta alongside Julio Jones for years. Then came 2021. It started with taking a leave of absence to deal with his mental health. I don't believe being indefinitely suspended for betting on games was part of the plan. He sat out all of 2022. And after a trade to the Jags, the league showed mercy and he's been reinstated for 2023. I only hope his talent hasn't been snuffed out from sitting on the shelf. With how well he played before his leave of absence, he's a threat on every play. Just do us all a favor and stay away from the gambling apps. The Seattle Seahawks select Rashad Penny, Whoa. running back, San Diego State. This pick still doesn't make sense to me considering all the holes Seattle had at the time. It's even more frustrating since Penny always seems to run into injury at the worst times. When he's able to be on the field, he's dynamite. He showed that in late 2021 and early 2022. But then devastating season ending ailments take him down. He's lost almost three entire seasons due to it. And the fear of being put back under the knife is a legit concern, especially with the wear and tear on running backs. I really don't want to do this considering how good he can be when he's on the field, but that's unfortunately been rare for him so far. The Pittsburgh still is select Terrell Edmonds. Well, you couldn't get Tremaine who would have filled a much more pressing need. So why not get his brother who was taking a shit at the time he got the call? The thing with Edmonds is that he's not a bad option. He saw it in the box, but as a cover safety, there's a lot to be desired. Declining his fifth year option only to bring him back when other options didn't go through is a testament to it. His future will probably involve bouncing around as a spot starter from team to team, but expect some frustration. It's just part and parcel for his game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Taven Bryan. Defensive tackle, Florida. When Saxonville was a thing, they bolstered their defense further to try and get over the top. What they really needed was a quarterback because Blake Bortles wasn't good, but don't interrupt your enemy when he wants to extend him long term. Ryan was decent in his first couple of years in the league, but then had serious trouble trying to crack a really weak Jags defense. And then was told to go away after year four. Seems more like a quality backup than a starter. He'll have a long career in the NFL, but you just can't draft that with a first rounder. The Minnesota Vikings select Mike Hughes, defensive back, University of Central Florida. Has this guy done much of anything in the NFL? He's held a roster spot, but hasn't come anywhere close to expectations. Tore his ACL his rookie year, couldn't push his way into the lineup in Minnesota, traded to Kansas City for next to nothing after three seasons. He did all right as a chief, but not enough to keep him around. He's a backup corner. Not exactly the worst fate in the world, but not at pick number 30. 
the New England Patriots select Sony Michelle. There you go. Running back, Georgia. It really did feel weird seeing New England draft a running back in the first round. To be fair, Michelle looked to be on the verge of breaking out in his first two seasons, especially playing a huge role in their Super Bowl win against the Rams. Then he got lost in the shuffle, eventually falling out of favor with the hoodie after major injury and being cast into space. Sony just feels like wasted potential. He hasn't been the same since that injury, barely clinging on to dear life in the NFL. The Patriots have been shit at drafting as of late, haven't they? With the 32nd pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Lamar Jackson. Oh, wow. Wow. Back. Baltimore is saved from the horrors of Joe Flacco. Remember when people feared mobile quarterbacks due to the Redskins ruining RG3? Those were some good times, weren't they? It's no debate that Jackson is one of the most electrifying players in the game today. And his 2019 was one of the best seasons a quarterback has had in recent memory. Flashes of sheer brilliance which has you dream of glories unseen. You can argue about his injuries over the past few seasons, his no-shows in the playoffs, and his... <clears throat> contract demands. But we're looking at this from a draft pick perspective. And this one is a no-doubter. And there is a rather poor summation of the first round of the 2018 NFL Draft. Some major disappointments along with a string of incredible successes and a sprinkle of Josh Rosen. Don't let that fool you into thinking the rest of the draft was full of nothing. It's kinda loaded in the second round. Start with perennial pro bowlers in Nick Chubb and Shaq Leonard. Chubb was taken from the pick that Houston sent to trade away Brock Osweiler. The gift that keeps on giving. Leonard was deemed as a reach by some at the time. Small world. With the likes of Braden Smith, Harold Landry, Christian Kirk, Dallas Goddard, Jesse Bates, and Brian O'Neill, more than plenty of talent to go around. The third round is best known for three players, potential Hall of Famers at this stage. Fred Warner, Orlando Brown Jr., and Mark Andrews. Andrews has done so well he made Hayden Hurst obsolete in Baltimore. Not to mention Fred Warner was part of a terrible draft day trade that shall go unmentioned. The rest of the round, Jerome Baker, Sam Hubbard, Michael Gallup, Alex Kappa, and more. It was successful all its own. Then day three began, and more starting caliber talents went. Naheem Hines, Josie Jewell, Jordan Whitehead, Dalton Schultz, Avante Maddox, and pro bowler Josh Sweat emerging as fine players. Not to mention more. The fifth round did bring four great players in particular. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, Jawan Bentley, and Bilal Nichols, quality starters in their own right. And also Wyatt Teller. Problem was he was let go of Buffalo before he could thrive. He's now the Browns game. The sixth round is more than a handful of starting talent. Ole Fadakasi, Foye Aloakun, Sebastian Joseph Day, Russell Gage, and Bradley Bozeman most notably. As for the seventh, one man in particular stands out. A rugby league player from Australia via the NFL's International Player Pathway Program. Jordan Mailata, an absolute beast of alignment, and one of the greatest success stories of the league's international efforts. This round also featured Zaire Franklin, starting linebacker for the Indianapolis Colts, along with a few others. This year's Mr. Irrelevant was Trey Quinn, who would play with Washington for a few seasons, but is now unfortunately out of the league. For those that weren't drafted, there is still a path to be forged, and it's littered with those that have brushed with greatness, such as J.C. Jackson, who says you have to be drafted to be one of the elite cornerbacks of the league. The Chargers gave him all that money when he hit the market for a big reason. And let's not forget the legend of Philip Lindsay. His start in Denver was awesome. Very short, but awesome. There are special teamers in JT Gray and Jeremy Reeves that were so successful they made the Pro Bowl. Not to mention starting talents like Gus Edwards, Jeff Wilson, Alan Lazard, Byron Pringle, Nick Gates, Levi Wallace, Javarius Ward, George Odom, and much more. The NFL Draft is always a make-or-break moment for teams. And 2018 was no different. Teams like Baltimore hit it out of the park. Others like the Jets and Redskins did not. Well, except for Deron Payne, he's still a Jet. Goddard! 
Ford. Oh! Oh! He is the tight end from South Dakota State. Go Birds!